sitting here going stir crazy. Can't sleep, can't leave. Now, technically, if I get down the road today and get too tired to keep going, I can call Jason and tell him what's going on and go to bed. It's just, boat doesn't actually deliver like deadline until uh, Friday morning but I'm close enough to make it one shot it's like 620 miles yeah, another three hours I gotta sit here this is why usually when I haven't slept past like seven hours of my break that I just stay up and then drive through the day because I had planned on getting up at two o'clock this morning. Uh, that's not two, that's, it is not two a.m. It is nine a.m. Because around midnight, I finally felt sleepy enough to take a little nap. I was like, you know what? I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll go to sleep for like five hours. You can set my alarm for 5 a.m. But then, when that alarm went off, my brain just said, hit snooze for the, every five minutes for the next four and a half hours. I mean, the thing's not as technically due until Friday morning, but I wanted to get up there early today so I could go to the Cornhusker shop in Sioux City and get grease done on my truck so that they quit hounding me about it. No, that's not gonna happen. Maybe I, they'll still let me do it Friday morning, but more likely that they'll want me to go up to the yard, which sucks because they don't have a place for me and my dog to hang out. You know, they got a truck or waiting room and all that, but can't be in there with your dog, which I did last time when I sat there long enough, but you know, I don't necessarily want to push that. And <laughs> we'll say this again, because I think I just said uh, had a bunch of F-bombs in it, and I'm trying not to believe on the videos, but I think I did on the last one. <clears throat> one of my last ones. If they're going to end up having me go to the yard instead of Cornhusker, I'm not standing around outside in 30 degree weather. So they're either going to have to immediately give me a hotel room that they're paying for and they have a ride for or I'm going to sit in that driver lounge with my dog and if they have a problem with it they can either get over it or fire me because they hired me on telling me that they were pet friendly and that I could have my dog with me and then you get there and you find out they don't have a place for you to be or for your dog to be while they're doing maintenance and then they want to do way more maintenance than any of other trucking company which I appreciate if, if they had a place for my dog to be you know if you were cool with me and the dog sitting in the truck waiting on shit fine even in the hot weather we got a place to be that's not just standing around in the in the middle of the shit I'd be I'd be fine with that but now like you you're gonna have me stand outside for six seven hours I'm not doing that I don't get paid for that you know if that was my job be outside I've done that before I can do that but I, I'm gonna st stay in there for five six seven hours on my supposed to be free time I hold on to my dog with a leash and just for hours on end not gonna do that so if I end up having to go back to the yard to get my grease and stuff done because I overslept today then they're just gonna have to get over it or fire me and I'll go rent a car and go home and find another job before the end of the freaking month, end of the week. Anyway, I'm gonna head home on down the road as soon as I get all this freaking moisture off the windshield.
happened. It's a good thing I'm going to the yard after all, huh? Still get a new windshield out of it. Something you can actually see through. That's cool. It's from that chip that's been there since I got in the truck. It just spread today. It's always a possibility when you have a chip. It works out for me. This windshield's trash. It's been trash since I've been in the truck. Take the thing to Horn Husker. Can't hey, remember if I load that landing gear or not. Yeah, it's down. Sometimes you kind of get on autopilot doing something that you've done a thousand times and just sitting here, I couldn't remember for sure if I dropped that landing gear or not. <sighs> this hand oh yeah I tried to get them to let me get my grease and stuff down in Sioux City tomorrow morning but they're insisting that it gets done up there so I don't know how tomorrow's gonna go now they got to change windshield so that they forced me to come up here to get this shit done. It's almost one o'clock and I haven't even gotten into the shop yet. I don't even know if they're gonna get to me today at this point. I'm gonna see how long I can hide out in the sleeper booth before they notice. Maybe they won't notice at all. That'd be neat. As long as you keep your mouth shut and stay back here. You stop. Stay. Stay. Well, I knew something like this could happen. pack some stuff a couple days worth anyway uh, can't take all my food with me I could but it'd be such a pain in the ass they said they'll run, make sure the APU's running all that it's gonna suck to not have all my shit Apparently, they're not going to be able to get this done over the weekend, so it'll be like Tuesday or Wednesday before my truck's back. Chances that the same cover on that mirror is going to... <laughs> truck, exact same damage. That's funny. Windshield seems a little bit nicer than the one I'm getting rid of. A little bit. It's still got a few different things in it, but nothing like that truck. Go to the 
the truck stop. I have Wi-Fi there anyway. No reason for me to be here. I should have got a truck with no sleeper or second bunk. Makes this sleeper booth look way bigger. Oh, this room. I'd be bumping my head right about here with a bump. Hi, buddy. You freaked out. We're in a different drug all of a sudden. Did it freak you out a little bit? Confusion. Getting dressed to go in a truck stop, use the bathroom and stuff. I noticed this. How in the hell does that happen? I can't turn the flash on my battery, so I'm almost dead. There's a whole chunk of plastic missing out of there. I mean, that's a pissed off dude, maybe. I don't know. Now, I used to make these. You can watch the space when I pull this out of here. make these for them all the time because it's fairly cheap and he gets a lot of fun out of them. But I had been buying their like rope ducks at the dollar store so I hadn't bought any in a while but uh, I left all his toys in the truck so he doesn't have anything to play with. He's driving me nuts so I gave him something to do. I don't have a refrigerator in here. I got a cup to keep my drinks cold. Not a big fan of warm drinkage. This me sit as still as I can in my truck. Super, super windy. Just looked at the weather. It's 31 degrees with a wind chill factor of 17 degrees barely that cold but then with that wind it's like yeah it's cold whenever I get my own truck I'm gonna look into if there's uh, a set of cab airbags that are I can manipulate because in windy shit like this I would drop my airbags completely just let them rest on let the truck rest on the frame wouldn't do all that shaking same with if I was sitting on a you know, a slight incline. If I had control over my airbags, it could drop one side and level the truck when I'm trying to sleep. Cause you know, it's kind of hard to sleep on a tilt for me anyway. You know, I, I've gotten used to it and I get some sleep, but it's not as restful as if you're lying still flat and motionless. Seems like it'd be a pretty easy thing to do having dump valves on your airbags so that they would either completely dump or you could dump two or you could dump one whatever you could dump all of them so that the thing wouldn't shake you could dump some of them so that they'd be level I don't know I just called uh, my load is ready actually like 12 hours early but I'm gonna wait probably Two or three hours so that I can pick it up and get down to close to Garden City. Hey, you buddy. What on, buddy? Whoa. Anyway, so that when I get down there, I'll be able to find a place to park and then I'll still be there a day early. So maybe, uh, Monday morning they can give me something else to do before. It'd be nice to get another four or five hundred miles for the week if I get down there a day early. I gotta run over to the yard anyway to grab a trailer, but I also need to find my truck and get my uh, clipboard slash paperwork chest holder thing, I don't know how you call it. I don't have any trip sheets or anything in this truck. 
Didn't think about that yesterday. The nice thing is I can put my camera where I used to have it because this windshield and my next windshield and my new my old truck will be so scratched up. The only reason I moved it over there is this is the only spot in that windshield that wasn't completely destroyed. So yeah. Now I can have it here where I like it. Where I can touch it easily and you know it's kind of my point of view instead of the center of the windshield. You know what I mean? Oh I gotta fix all this though. It's all backwards. know what I'm about to show you doesn't make me look very smart. I just drove 60 miles with landing gear basically all the way down. Not sure how I forgot to raise the landing gear. I mean the trailer was really low to begin with. I'm gonna raise it up a little bit, but somehow or another, I completely forgot to raise the landing gear. And I just got lucky that it didn't get hung up on some railroad track somewhere. Man, how does that happen? I need to do some recalibration or something because maybe I've gotten complacent because I've been doing it so long that somehow or another I feel like I, I just do things that I can't believe I did that I got super lucky never come close to doing anything like that before. Thank God there was no lumpy railroad tracks between there and here. That could have been really bad. Like, end your career bad. Get hung up on a railroad track somewhere because you didn't raise their landing gear up. Man. I thought the mistake I made last week in forgetting to account for the time zone change was a rookie mistake. That was like, that was beyond rookie mistake. That was like two brain cells rubbed together mistake. Like horrible, really stupid thing to do. Bet you it doesn't happen again. <laughs> When I, I started to back up and I saw that landing gear that low, I was like, oh my God. The fact that I made it here, made it go over their freaking speed bumps, all that, without touching the landing gear at the pickup, my freaking alarm light is on this trailer. Let's see what that's about. Could be nothing, could be I'm not leaving here until it gets on another trailer. It says check EVT circuit, put the temps right, and Put it on continuous and it started and I'll watch it for the next couple times I get out and make sure it stays at the right temp and if something else happens with it, I'll call it in.
sign saying the card reader is broken is gone. So I have cash, but I don't have a $10 bill. I've got to remember to bring a $10 bill when I come to this place. Check out that gross weight. You see that? It's gonna focus to 80,000 pounds exactly. So like if you'll slide the trailer back tandem back away too. Yeah. Sound redundant and wasteful, but I'm also gonna weigh this thing at a cat scale the first chance I get. Because cat scale offers some protection, right? If the cast scale says it's legal and I get a ticket for not being legal, then they help you defend yourself more. Where, you know, that little random scale, you don't know how long it's been since it's been calibrated or anything like that. So with, it, with weights this close to being uh, at my limit, I'm going to stop and make sure it's certified at a cast scale. I was going to go and buy something, but I guess I won't. Okay. I'm going to be here for 30 minutes and I'll be out of here. No. Okay. Or else I wouldn't be here. Okay, well, when I my clock resets, I'll go, I'll leave. Question, please listen. Why do you think these places are all going to go out of business? Oh, yes, they are. I parked out of the way. I'm going to be here for 20 minutes. I was going to spend money there. I was going to spend money.
That's amazing. I'm literally as far out of the way as I could be. driver for future reference they call energy what the hell is even that okay it's unreal that's not the first time I've ran into rude ass employees That was the AKAL Travel Center at exit 360 in Nebraska. Just in case you were wondering where not to go, unless you like to be threatened with by the police or with the police. For no reason other than she hates truck drivers. You didn't hear the part as she was walking away. You know, when I asked her why, why do you think places like this are, are are going out of business. You, know, you, you can't afford to treat your only customer base being a truck stop. You can't treat people like that and expect to stay a business. I went out of my way, I was parked out of the way. I didn't pull up in the middle of shit and, and go, go to bed. I was parked out of the way. I needed to sit there another 17 minutes when she came out. She didn't want to hear it. She's going to call the cops. Started taking pictures of my truck. Like, I, I actually understand not letting trucks park in the middle of everything and, and clog stuff up for 10 hours straight. I understand having rules, but you telling me you can't be like, oh, okay, I see you're not going to be here long. That's fine. Just you can't park here for a long time. No, you're just you can't park here. It's one of the things that drive me nuts more than anything. Like just not being able to think for yourself. Like those are the rules and there's no other, there's no leeway. Jason, what are you doing? 
Get up there and lay down. What are you rooting around in that for? There ain't nothing down there for you. Crazy dog. You're crazy. Hey, what happened to you there? You're, you're one hell of a guard dog. Crazy lady. You're gonna call the cops on me and you're just gonna sit there all chill like nothing happened. Suck with that. You ain't got my back or nothing. You ain't got my back or nothing. What I'm saying is, like, the thing that bothers me more than just about anything is when you run into an unthinking person, unreasonable, right? Where you normally, with a normal human being, if they come out to you and say, hey, you can't park here, and you say, hey, I'm not going to be here long, the next question is, oh, well, how long are you going to be here? I would have said 15, 20 minutes. So they'd be like, oh, okay, no problem. You, you just can't park here for very long because it's not a parking space. That should have been how that conversation went. And then I would have went in and bought some things and then left. Everything would have been fine. But she was unreasonable. Okay? So, you can't park here. Okay, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to be here long. Well, you can't park here. I'm not going to be here long. Okay, well, you can't park here. It happened to me almost exactly like that once at a truck stop in Missouri that I still don't go to to this day. Pulled in late at night, three or four o'clock in the morning. They had six diesel pumps, their, their parking lot's full. I wasn't even gonna take a 30 minute break. I just needed to run in and use the bathroom just going to grab a couple of things to drink, hit the road again. The moment I walked in the door, is that you at my diesel pump? It's like, yeah. Well, you need to leave. Okay. Uh, I was going to use the bathroom, grab a couple things and go. You need to not block the pumps. I was like, you have seven empty fuel islands out there. I'm going to be here for five minutes. I'm not hurting anything. Well, it's our policy. You can't pump, uh, park at the pump. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just use your bathroom and leave and never come back. Well, if you don't leave now, I'll call the cops. I was like, you know what, lady? You go call the cops. I'm going to go take a piss and get back to my truck. And if the cops get here before I'm gone, I guess I'll have to deal with them. Other than that, whatever I almost said that shit to her just then too I'm in the middle of nowhere Nebraska you go ahead and call the cops and we'll we'll see who gets here first if the cops get here before my clock runs out I'll just leave and if the cops get here before my clock turns over I'll chat with the police for another 10 minutes and say, no, I, I plan to leave, no problem. And I'll still just leave. I should have just done that. And then I asked, her, you know, all the cops are going to do for a trespassing is tell you to leave. The only time that's a threat is if you still refuse to leave once the police arrive. That's all the cops are going to do. They're going to be there to say, hey, you have to leave. They want you gone, you have to leave. And that would be the end of it. I should have just stayed there. Next time I will. Literally only needed to be there 15 minutes. I was like 17 minutes. I was already there for eight minutes. I needed a uh, 30. That's 22 minutes is what I had left. Not a big deal. But people are gonna make mountains out of molehills and be unreasonable. You're going to go out of business. You can't treat your customer base that way. Okay.